So it's June 1st, 2019, and it looks like this is going to be the last day that Alexander Gustafson will be stepping into an octagon. And this is coming in a loss against Anthony Smith. I'm going to break down what happened in the finishing sequence from the time when he attempted the takedown to when he ended up being tapped out by Renick Choke off it, or when he was um, being bellied out. So we're going to start with, I think we have to close this out. Uh, but we're going to start with the takedown attempt. So how he's going to set it up. So he's going to start off by throwing a jab. Uh, I guess he was just getting a read from earlier in the fight that when he throws the jab that Smith looks to counter with the hook. So when he when Smith goes to counter with the hook, Gus is going to go underneath and try to shoot a takedown. So he throws a jab, Smith counters with the hook, Gus gets underneath. Now, ideally for this type of a takedown, he's going to grab right behind the knee here. He wants to have his left arm on the right side of Anthony Smith. Uh, unfortunately for him, that's not going to work out for him ends up being on the other side. So here he's in a bit of a tough situation where if he keeps fighting forward, Smith can actually cut around him and take his back. So he's not going to want to do that. So either you have to adjust and kind of cut your angle really hard over to the right uh, or just disengage. Uh, but while he tries to disengage, Smith is actually going to be able to pull this leg back and then attempt to take down on him. So here goes Smith. Uh, so now this is a tough spot for Gus. Gus does have the underhook here. It's kind of shallow. Smith has his hands connected, or, I mean, effectively has his hands connected here. Uh, but Gus is actually going to do a good job of not getting taken down immediately. So it breaks apart here. But still, Anthony Smith has the uh, over-under and is going to look to take Gus down. Again, Smith is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but his his real skill comes from his top game. Uh, it's not that he can't defend himself off his back or that he's not good off of his back, but He's really good on top, and that's where he wants to be, especially against a guy like us who had issues in the John Jones fight where once he got taken down, he had trouble getting back up and then eventually had his back taken, gotten flattened out, and then got TKO'd. So from here, Gus is actually going to try to throw a takedown in here. Now, with the throw like this, typically what you're going to need, or typically who's going to win is the guy who has the lower hips. Uh, one of the downsides of being as tall as Gustafson is, is that it's going to be tough to get lower hips uh, on a throw like this. Now, granted, Anthony Smith is pretty tall as well, uh, but you can see right here, Gus's hips up here, Smith's hips down here. Who's going to win? Generally, lower hips wins. That's what happens here. Lower hips win. So he gets taken down up against the fence. So one of the peculiar things about MMA is that a lot of times when people get taken down, when they try to get up, they expose themselves to getting their back taken. Uh, now, when you're up against the fence, oftentimes it's tough to get that second hook in, so it's worth taking the risk, and especially if you're late in a fight like this where you're pretty sweaty, uh, you figure you can get away. Uh, but with a guy like Anthony Smith, the guy who's trained a lot in the game, who's really good at playing very controlled and being very um, methodical about how he goes about his positioning, uh, that type of a game against Anthony Smith can be pretty tough to pull off, and Gus wasn't able to do it because I, I guess for whatever reason he wasn't explosive enough, and he also made a couple of little errors. Uh, so we'll go into those. So this is where Gus is going to turtle. Now, one of the reasons why this works, as I mentioned before, is that Smith can get his right hook in, but oftentimes that left hook is not going to get in because there's no space in between Gus's hip and the fence. Uh, either Gus is going to leave a little bit of space here, Anthony's going to be able to pull Gus off the fence just enough to get his leg in. So he gets that first hook in, just kind of rides, slides his knee in right here. Uh, but he's still being a little bit careful, not trying to over um, overcommit the position. Staying heavy. So Gus is going to wait to explode. And one of the reasons why I'm stopping this as or stopping as much as I am is that I actually had some copyright issues with this in the past where UFC is very um, aggressive about this stuff. So to avoid showing too much of the fight continually and getting into more copyright trouble, I'm going to be breaking it up a little bit, but bear with me here. So now he's looking to punch. Still has that one hook in. He's actually going to take out his left hook now just to try to make sure he maintains position. So left hook is out. Now it's going to be in, and he's going to try to take the back and look for what's like a seatbelt grip here. So he's starting to kind of slide off. So Gus is actually not in the worst spot here in that he, he's pretty slippery. He's got Smith riding pretty high and kind of off to the side as well. Uh, from here, you kind of want to shake a lot and just kind of like shake to slowly kind of make him fall off over the top. Doesn't really do that here. I'm not sure um, if he was worried about uh, having Smith just grab the arm here. Because, again, one of the dangers about this position is that even if you can shake the guy off, this arm is generally going to be extended in the process, and there's an opportunity for an armbar. That's how Paige Van Dan actually won against Rachel Ostevich. Now, granted, Anthony Smith 
and Anthony Alexander Gustafson are highly better or not highly better. That's a weird way to put it, but they're much better technically than those two are. Uh, but even still, that technique still works here. And that's definitely something that I'm sure Gus was aware of. So he's kind of bending the arm a little bit too. But for Gustafson, he's trying to wait for the the right opportunity to get out of here. For Smith, he's trying to recover his position where he can get his hips back up and then be able to control the back a little bit better. And that's eventually what he's going to be able to do here. So still trying to maintain his position. You can actually kind of see that he's using his left arm here underneath um, Gustafson's left armpit to try to pull himself back up. And in doing so, he's also going to try to like extend Gustafson out as well. And when he eventually gets this position here, he's going to also, in addition to extending Gustafson out, he's also going to be able to get his hip pressure and push down on Gustafson to push his hips down into the mat. So he's still kind of riding high here. Pushes down on the head, back underneath the arm. He's trying to drive that hip pressure down while he's extending out. And here we go. And this is a terrible position to be in. Um, this is the position that Alexander Gustafson got punched out against John Jones against. Uh, and it's obviously the position that he ended up losing to Anthony Smith against as well. Uh, but this is a bad position to be in in jujitsu when all you have to worry about is just submissions. Uh, oftentimes you want to be able to build your base back up. That means you have to take your hands away from your neck to kind of sort of like do a bit of like a push up, so to speak. Um, but in MMA, anytime you leave your head unattended, it's bound to get hit. And there's a lot of power that can be generated here. And that's what Anthony Smith is going to start doing. So he's throwing some punches. Punches, elbows. Just really bad. And he's doing a great job of driving his hips down this entire time as well. So Anthony Smith, I mean, at this point, if you're Gus, you can try to work your way back up. But you've it, this is one of those things where it's kind of like the old thing that you hear, like a white belt asking jiu-jitsu, where it's like, how do I define a triangle? And the answer is, well... Granted, if you're in a triangle, you fucked up a long time ago. So kind of work on what got you in that position in the first place. Uh, you, you kind of say the same thing here where once Gus is in this position, there's not a ton he can do, especially against a guy like Anthony Smith. who's really good on top, really good black belt. Um, and he's going to be able to mix in the punches and be able to find a choke as well. So now he's starting to sink it in. So sinks it in with his left arm. Again, Gus is kind of in a tough position. What do you defend? Position or the choke? Uh, ends up being a little bit too late. Great pressure from Smith. He gets the tap. So a huge win for Anthony Smith. He was a guy who, heading into the Jones fight, I felt like he kind of got pushed in a little bit too quickly. He beat Rashad Evans. He beat uh, Shogun Hua. Both guys are past their primes and are a bit chinny. He knocked out both of them. Uh, the one big win he had was against Vulcan Ozdemir, which was a bit of a close fight where Ozdemir had his moments. Uh, Smith has his moments. Both of them kind of gassed out by the third round. And Ozdemir was just more gas than Smith was at that point. Smith was able to finish him. Um, he, he was fairly impressive against John Jones. He didn't get tired as quick as I expected him to. Uh, but it's not like he was, it ever looked like he was close to winning. So in a fight like this with Gustafson, I figured Gustafson would have the edge as well. And for, good amount, for a good amount of time, it looked like Gus did have the edge. I think the first round, you probably have to give it to Smith. Uh, Gus looked pretty good in the middle rounds, uh, especially in the third round where he landed that big body kick where I think he actually hurt Smith, but then went in for the takedown as opposed to trying to finish him on the feet. Uh, but once Smith got on top, he was able to finish Gus and it's a huge win for him. He says he doesn't want, doesn't want to fight again for the rest of the year. I think that'll be okay with how the light heavyweight division is going. It's not like he's about to get a title shot anyway, even though he is probably going to be pushed into like a top three, if not top two ranking right now. I don't really see him getting a title shot after losing to John Jones so convincingly. So for him, if he wants to take some time off, that's probably fine for the rest of the division. I guess it's a good thing to have. Some new contenders. We've been used to being Gus, DC, and Jones for a while. Gus has taken himself out of the out of the fray now, so it's pretty much just Jones. DC is not really in the fray. If he does take one more light heavyweight fight, that'd be the last one he takes. Uh, so we are getting some new blood. Rakic uh, had a huge knockout win earlier on the, I mean, I guess undercard, so to speak, but er earlier in the show. So light heavyweight has some new options here. Anthony Smith um, with the win over Gustafson. I, I think for for fans like me who we're kind of having a hard time accepting him as a top light heavyweight contender with this win over Gustafson. It really does a lot to, to show that he actually does belong in this belong in the top of the division. So you have to respect him and you have to respect what he's done.